Amen. May the Lord give you uh, revelation knowledge and understanding concerning the kingdom. May he open, open the eyes of your understanding as we look into his word. May it be illuminated and that you have wisdom, spiritual wisdom and revelation to know how to comprehend and apply his word. Not just be hearers, but doers of his word. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight will come from Judges. Judges, I may have said Joshua, but Judges, I mean, amen. Chapter 6, beginning at verse 11, and we'll read through verse 22 in the New King James Version of the Bible. Praise God. Familiar portion of scripture, but it falls in line with what we have been talking about in regard to help the Lord is calling me. Amen. Which is to say he's calling me into service. Amen. So we're going to shift gears in that same thought, but we're going to shift gears. Amen. And tonight our subtopic will be gaining victory over fear. Praise God. Gaining victory over fear. And we'll introduce some things about Joshua, Judge, Joshua, Judges tonight, and then also about overcoming fear. For the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but he's given us the power of love and he's given us a sound mind. Amen. And so we're going to be uh, establishing that truth in your life, speaking into your life from this day forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Judges chapter 6, verse 11 through 23. Amen. Judges chapter 6. We're going to be dealing with the most part of that, and we'll follow back up on that this week in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. May the Lord speak to you, amen, clear tonight and give you power over every circumstance in the name of Jesus. Judges chapter 6, verse 11 through 23 says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which is in Oprah, which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Glory to God. That is the, that is the summation. That is a, a end all phrase. Amen. Nothing else after this really makes a difference. Not, no excuse, no situation, no circumstance, praise God, uh, matters because of that one catch-all phrase, amen, the Lord, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. That's really all we have to have confidence in, to know, to rest upon, that will destroy the fear of God's call on our life is the fact that, amen, the Lord is with us. Praise God. Verse 13. Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why? Why then has all this happened to us? And where are all of the miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Glory to God. Verse 14, then the Lord turned uh, to him and said, go in this might of yours, amen, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianite, have I not sent you? So he said to him, oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Glory to God. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be with you and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Then he said to him, if now I found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you, a man who talks with me. Do not depart from here, I pray, until I come to you and bring you and my offering, glory to God, and set it before you. And he said, I will wait until you come back. Thank you, Jesus. That's shouting words, just, just that alone. Verse 19, so Gideon went, and he, he went in and prepared a young goat and unleavened bread from an ephah of flour. The meat he put in a basket. He put 
the broth, amen, in a pot, and he and he brought it to, to him under the terebinth tree and presented them. The angel of the Lord said to him, take the meat and the unleavened bread and lay them on this rock and pour out the broth. And so he did. Then the angel of the Lord put out the end of the staff that was in his hand, touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and fire rose up out of the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened bread, and the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Now Gideon perceived that he was that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for it I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And then he said, the Lord said to him, peace be with you. Amen. Do not fear. Amen. You shall not die. Glory to God. Amen. You shall not die. Amen. The first thing that I want to present and that I want to say tonight is when God calls, it is a natural reaction in the human sense to first be very reluctant to the place of fear, amen, doubt, amen, concerning the call of God on our life. It's biblical, amen, it's biblical. But the one of the first thing God will present, pr proceed to deliver us from is not so much the fear of the, uh, the concern of the enemy, but the confidence in knowing that God is with us. The presence of God through the Holy Spirit in New Testament, amen, he is with us. Ultimately, the, the catch-all phrase, the end of all the matter is this one thing. Are you sure that God is with you? If the Lord is with you in the baptism and the presence of the Holy Spirit, God has sent you on this assignment. Glory to God. Amen. There is no need for jousting concerning any of the rest. There's no need for watching any of the rest. We must proceed up and move at once. At least we talk ourselves out of it in time and years pass, pass by. Amen. Because del delayed obedience is still disobedience. Glory to God. Deliverance from fear. There are four areas of fear that we have to deal with. Amen. The four areas of fear that God has to deliver us from. Number one is the fear of rejection. In the same way Moses says, uh, what if, amen, Israel don't believe me that you, that you sent me? What if Pharaoh don't believe? Praise God. There's a fear of rejection of saying that God sent me to do this, to call me and sent me to do this work. Glory to God. Amen. And in the hour that we're living in, it is almost like it's equally difficult because so many people are running up saying, God said, God said, in reality, God has not said. Glory to God. And so uh, it feels like uh, uh, people are looking like the body of Christ looking like, oh, oh my God, here's another prophet. Here's another evangelist. Here's another, amen, apostle. Glory to God. But if God be with you, amen, never mind how many people who have in error been called or whatever, amen, to the, to the Lord you serve, to the Lord you live or die, never mind what anybody says about how many have come before. You just be authentic. You just be real. Amen. Number one is the fear of rejection. We must overcome the fear of rejection of men, of family, of present or uh, preceding leadership. Amen. In the body of Christ, if God called you, that settles the whole matter. Amen. Fear, amen, of rejection. The other fear is the fear of failure. Amen. Amen. The fear of failure. Moses said, and we'll review that last uh, from last week, glory to God. What if I can't do it? What if it don't happen? What if you said, amen, and then I, amen, I, don't, I, don't, I don't do what you said? Amen. There's a fear of failure. And then having to face your comrades, face the church, face those that you said God called you to, amen, in shame and in failure. Glory to God. And we think of ourselves, but if we trust and lean and depend on God, hallelujah, amen, then it, praise God, that's all, that, that, that's just it, amen. The other fear is the fear of death. 
The last verse that we read out of yeah, Judges chapter 6, amen, the verse 23, the last one that we read, it, amen, the angel of the Lord said to him, peace uh, be with you. Do not fear, you shall not die. Glory. Faith in that word will deliver us from, amen, the thought of the possibility of dying in the midst of serving God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Fear of death. The last one is the fear of acceptance. This kind of goes hand in hand with rejection. Praise God. Fear of acceptance. And some of the, some of the greatest scars that we have had is, uh, we had to get delivered from was the people that we say God's called us to. We sacrificed. We've left all. We've done so much. And then, amen, they don't accept us. Praise God. Initially. But I'm telling you, consistency, to be consistent, is the antidote of acceptance. Sooner or later, the works that we do are so undeniable, we can't, we can't help but to say that that person is with the Lord. You can't just walk up one time and say, God said, and then everybody turn over and do, back, and do backflips. Praise God. Consistency is the key. Let your work speak for you. Glory to God. Let your work speak, speak for you. Praise God. God has always raised up hand-chosen people to become leaders in the midst of some of the most difficult and rebellious times. He has always hand-chosen, glory to God, leaders. And as Gideon would say, he is the least of the tribes in that half-tribe of Manasseh. Praise God. Uh, of the children of Israel or Jacob got called, changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Of the children of Israel, amen, one of the sons was Joseph. Joseph divided his lot uh, in Egypt to his sons. He had two sons, one Manasseh, the other Ephraim. Amen. So they were half tribes. Glory to God. And so this Gideon was of that half tribe and his family was of the of the smallest family in the half tribe glory to god and he says to the lord amen i'm i'm not worthy of this i'm so a glory to god thank you lord but that those are the kind of people who originally qualify glory to god how can i save israel amen my clan is the weakest in manasseh and i'm the least in my father's house those are the people that, amen, that God chose because, amen, many are called, but few are chosen. The, the, amen, the wise, the noble, men of great God don't always choose those kind of people. Amen, choose people that got to lean and depend on him to get the job done. Praise God. And these chosen individuals, amen, have always been reluctant to answer the call. Amen. Have always so. If you are reluctant, praise God. It's 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 biblical. Amen. But 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 in the end, uh, God always get his man or woman. Amen. Praise God. Always get his man, woman. In the beginning, these chosen people are never uh re never confident that they're able to do, and that qualifies you. I'm scared of people who hit the ground running and they think they're ready for everything that the Lord called them to do initially. That kind of people scare me. Glory to God. Uh, it gives me pause because I don't see it biblically in the name of Jesus. When you look at the book of Judges, when you look at the book of Judges, it is a stark contrast, amen, to Joshua. Judges is a, con a stark, a serious contrast that the people are in the book of Joshua. In Joshua... You see, the obedient people conquered the land through trusting in the power of God in the book of Joshua. In Judges, however, amen, a disobedient and rebellious people are defeated time and time again because of their rebellion against God. In these seven distinct cycles of sin to salvation, amen, Judges shows her, us how Israel had set aside God's law, amen, and placed 
uh, and in, in his place substituted, amen, what was right in their own eyes. Each man done what was right in his own eyes. They abandoned God's law, amen, to do corrupt things. And so this cycle, that's what you see. The key theme in the book of Judges is the cycle. Praise God. God raised up military campaigns, raised up judges to lead, to throw off the yoke of bondage, to restore uh, pure worship. But as soon as the amen, as soon as they could, they went back into the sin cycle, went back into the cycle again. So over and over in the book of Judges, what you're going to see as you're reading it is you're going to see the words, again, Israel did evil, amen, in the sight of the Lord. Again, Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And so when you read in the first part of Judges, a key word comes up, praise God. Uh, as they were reading, they said, the Bible says in Judges 2 and 16, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges to deliver them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Israel did great evil. God had mercy upon them. Yet they would not listen to their judges. They played the harlot with their gods. They bowed down to them. They turned quickly from the way of which their fathers walked in obedience to the commandment of the Lord and did not do so. Verse 18 says, and when the Lord raised up judges, amen, for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge, for the Lord was moved with pity by their groaning. Glory to God. Amen. Verse 19 is key. And it came to pass, Judges 2 and 19, that when the judges uh, were dead, that they reverted and behaved more corruptly than their fathers by doing by doing the other by following other gods and serving them bowing down to them they did not cease from their own doings nor amen their stubborn ways they did not turn from them as soon as the judge died they reverted it's that cycle judges teach us about the repetitive cycle Amen. Teach us about, in prison terms, a high recidivism rate. Amen. Going back to prison for the same offense. Going back to lockdown for the same for the same reason. In Judges 6, it explains to us what the issue was. Praise God for the oppression. Amen. Again, verse 6, the, then the children of Israel, they did evil in the sight of the Lord. The Lord delivered them from the hand of delivered them into the hands of Midian for seven years. The hand of the Lord prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites. They were impoverished. They hid in dens and caves and strongholds in the mountains because they did evil. Here's the point. Sin will always leave us weak before the, our enemies. Sin will always leave us weak. Verse 6 says that Israel was impoverished because of the Midianites. Amen. God sent prophets to tell them the reason why. Praise God. And the reason in verse 10 is because they did not obey the voice of the Lord. So God raised up another judge, another deliverer, another messenger that would govern and lead the people by the name of Gideon. Praise God. By the name of Gideon. And the Bible says that this Gideon, the angel of the Lord, appeared to him under the terebinth tree, amen, and called Gideon something he was not at the time. Amen. Amen. A mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. God calls those things that be not as though they were. We got to rest right there. One of the ways to break fear out of your life when God call us is keep saying what he said about you. Glory to God. Keep saying what he said about you. If, if the declaration was you're a mighty woman, a mighty man of valor, keep calling yourself what God said you are. Psalms 2, 7 through 9 says, I will declare the Lord's decree, what he said about me. I said, 
I'm the smallest, and my family is the smallest, and I'm the smallest in the family. I said, I'm not worthy, but the Lord said, glory to God, I'm with you, you mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. Amen. So the number one, the first way to break sin out of your life, uh, fear out of your life, say what he said and not what you see. Glory to God. Say what he said and not what you see yourself as. Not what you see. For the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall walk by faith and not by sight. Glory to God. Romans 4 said, God calls those things that be not as though they were. He speaks to them as though they, amen, that, that are not yet. He called them that anyway. Glory to God. Speak to yourself. Call yourself an overcomer. Call yourself, amen, a believer in Christ. Call yourself what he called you. Praise God. Now your mouth has spoiled your soul by repeating your observation and not God's revelation. Say it again, Bogus. Your Our mouth can spoil you, can bring fear and calamity. We suffocate under our own breath by repeating observation and not revelation. Glory to God. He, amen. You got to declare what he said until you see it, until it manifests, until you start feeling yourself growing. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 30, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Glory to God. It don't have to take nobody to keep telling you God called you, keep telling you you can do it. Glory to God. Amen. Sometimes all you have is just yourself. Amen. I will declare the Lord's decree. Amen. What he said about me, that word, it really literally means homo legeo. It means to say the or to speak the same. I'm going to say what he said. Amen. I'm an overcomer. I'm a victor in him. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above only. I'm not beneath. I'm seated in high places, far above principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. I've been accepted in the beloved. My sin's been nailed to the cross. I'm empowered because of him. Glory to God. He is my, my light, my salvation, the horn of my salvation. He's my rock, my hiding place, my strong tower in him. I, I run and I am, amen, I am safe. Glory to God. You got to say what he said and not what you see. Amen. Move on revelation and not observation. The angel of the Lord did not even address Gideon's uh, plea bargaining. Did not address, amen, his fear, the, the question, why then has all of this happened? It's happened because your attitude. It's happened because of sin. It's happened, but the angel of the Lord didn't even address it. Why didn't he address it? Number one, because he had already made the catch-all. He had already said, release the word, amen, that the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Now, all of that that Gideon said in chapter 13, I mean, verse 13, praise God, and his excuses didn't matter. Why? For one reason only, God is with him. That's the key verse. That's the key word, amen, is God with you, amen. Then the Lord, that word angel of the Lord, capital A, in uh, our theological circle of studies, they call that a theophany. A theophany, which is an Old Testament manifestation of Jesus Christ. The word the Lord or uh, is, uh, the word in the Hebrew really means, amen, uh, can't think of the word right now. I'll think of it in a minute. Praise God, Adonai. It means Adonai. It does not mean Jehovah because he looked upon and said, I've seen the Lord. I seen Adonai, not Jehovah, because God told Moses, no man can look upon me and live. So that word, the angel of the Lord, is an Old Testament manifestation of Jesus Christ. It pronounced a theophany. Glory to God. Amen. Verse 14, then the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours. You shall save Israel, amen, from the hand of the Midianites have I not sent you. Amen. He's making these statements these declarations that, that that don't even repeat <laughs> glory to God Gideon's fear Gideon's uh misguided understanding he says there's one thing over and over glory to God go in this might of yours mighty man of valor the Lord is with you amen this is what Gideon said to him oh my Lord how can I save Israel 
Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Watch what he says. Don't even address his pity. Watch what he says. And then the Lord said to him, surely I'll be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Glory to God. Amen. So God said, never mind your observation that has translated over into excuses. You got to get to revelation so you can get about your business. Glory to God. You got to get to revelation. He doesn't even address his apparent fleshly observation, which are true, but revelation trumps the truth. Amen. And he says to him, surely I will be with you. That's all we need to know. All we need to know is God was going to, amen, the presence of the Lord is with us. Amen. When we get to, jo when we, uh, back up to Joshua chapter 5 in Gilgal, after the, those that was born in the wilderness were circumcised, after the manna has ceased, Joshua met the angel of the Lord in the road going to Jericho, asking, were you with us or for? He said, nay, I'm from the Lord. In other words, I'm, I'm doing the Lord's will. I'm not with you or against you. How, how, how you act depends on how I act. Glory to God. And he said, take your shoes off. This is holy ground. Amen. Once he encountered divine intervention, once Joshua encountered, amen, uh, heavens, thank you, Lord, glory to God, sentinel, once he experienced divine intervention, Jericho was already defeated. The only thing he has to do from that point because God has sent backup, God has sent angelic help, God has put his stamp on it. All Joshua has to do at this point is the same thing Gideon has to do is follow, and we have to do is follow instruction. That's glory to God. That's victory assured. That's a check mark. If you just can follow instructions and hear the voice of God. Thank you, Father. Surely I will be with you. There he says it again. And you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Verse 17. Then he said to him, if thou found favor in your sight, amen, then show me a sign that it is you, amen, to talk with me. Amen. Glory to God. God showed Moses a sign. Took his rod and threw it down and became a snake. He ran from it. Then he told him to pick it up again took his hand and put it in, the, in in his bosom. Glory to God. Amen. And it became leprosy. We took it out, put it back in. It became clean again. Glory to God. See, listen to this, beloved. I want you to get this down in your spirit. God don't mind showing you a sign. That, amen. Don't mind at all showing you a sign that he is with us. One of the greatest signs is Emmanuel. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But God don't mind showing you. Praise God. And he says, wait a minute, but don't depart. Amen. I got my offering. Glory to God. Amen. One of the signs that seals the matter, that seals the deal of whether God is with us or not, does he receive our sacrifice? Thank you, Father. Amen. If you want to know whether or not God is with you, this is, amen, when God responds to you in worship and Lap up the sacrifice by fire. He's a God that answers by fire. Thank you, Father. Bring us a, a sacrifice, a prepared hallelujah, a prepared thank you, Jesus, a prepared amen, glory to God. Come prepared to worship. And he's the God that answers by fire. If he consumes you and your sacrifice, amen, that's your check mark to proceed. Worship always gives us revelation knowledge of when it's time to, amen, to proceed, amen. With If he laps up the sacrifice by fire, God answers us by fire. He touched the rock with the staff, amen. It, it, it consumed it's the, uh, the under meat. It consumed the unleavened bread. This is the sign of my seal of my, and my approval of you. Amen. Listen to this. You got to go and get him what he want. You got to give it to him and then give it to him how he wants it. Glory to God. This has been from Genesis to Revelation. Glory to God. This has been from, I, I don't have time to get into all of the sacrifice, 
Praise God. You got to study that on your own. Amen. God has always been a God that answers by fire. This is reminiscent of, amen, 1 Kings and the 16th chapter where God on Mount Carmel, this Elijah, glory to God, in this showdown with the prophets of Baal, amen, God answers by fire. He answers us by fire. If you're not sure of his uh, calling, if you get if you get sidetracked and not sure of the direction you're going, if you get bewildered, glory to God, and you somehow lose your nerve in the midst of serving, here's the answer, worship. Amen. Come with a worthy sacrifice, worship. Some bring financial sacrifice, but always bring yourself. For the Bible says, amen, that we, amen, present ourselves as a living sacrifice, whole, amen, uh, acceptable unto God in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Always prepare for worship and give it to him like he asked. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Verse, verse 27. Now Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. So Gideon said, Alas, O oh my O oh Lord God, for I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Glory to God. Call that place in verse 24. We didn't have it on here. Amen. Jehovah Shammah. Thank you, Lord. God of peace. The first victory, and I got to go, the first victory that God gave Gideon was the victory of the fight going on inside of him. The first victory was internal, not external. The first victory was the victory over the fear of rejection, the fear of acceptance, the fear of failure, the fear of death. The first victory that must take place that gives us boldness and gives us the confidence to proceed, to go ahead, glory to God, to, amen, take the next step. As Caleb and Joshua said, amen, let us go up at once, for we are well able to take the first victory that has to be overcome is the battle raging within our own spirit. Glory to God. Can I go? Should I go? Lord, how, how, how do I know you're calling me? What if my family, what if my husband don't hear me? What if my wife don't receive me? What if the kids think I've lost my mind? We got a lot of doubt and unbelief and a lot of rage stirring within us. Glory to God. Amen. The first victory is not the victory over the Midianites. The first victory in Joshua is not the victory over Jericho. The first victory for the disciples was not the victory over Herod, but it was an internal victory. Got to settle. Got to, amen, amen. Believe God internally. You, We can never overcome in the spirit or external callings of God, enemies, Amen. If we can't deal with what's on the inside, check this out. Listen to this. When Jesus got on the boat, he told his disciples, amen, y'all get in. We're going to the other side. That's it. That's it. That's all we need to know. Get in. We're going over to the other side. That's it. We're going over. Amen. That's the summation of the matter. We're going to the other side. In the midst of going to the other side, the Bible says that the winds became, amen, contrary. There was some contrary winds blowing as they were going to the other side. As a result of the wind blowing, the waves lapping over, jumping into the boat, amen, so as that it was, it seems as though it was about uh, to uh, to go down. They went and woke up Jesus and asked these words, do not do you care that we are perishing? Amen, Jesus didn't even address, amen, the words. He woke up, the first matter of business is to rebuke and stop was causing the panic, and the panic was in the wind because they were contrary winds. The sea will not act that way if it was not for the winds. Amen. So here's the order that he did. He rebuked the wind and spoke to the waves. The waves didn't have no need to be rebuked. They just need to be talked to. It's the, it's the wind that was causing the waves. See, in every congregation, you got wind and you got waves. You got contrary winds that's causing mess, and then you got, amen, the waves that are jumping because of the wind. Amen. One had to be rebuked. The other one just need talk to. He said, be still. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. He said, be still. Amen. So the first thing that he dealt with was the cause for their fears. And then he said a word that's still echoing in time. 
how is it that, you, amen, you have no faith? Glory to God, because our faith, what? Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. What did he say? The reason why he, he rebuked their faith. He said these words, let's go over to the other side. That's it. That's all you need to know. Let's go over to the other side. Amen. When God says, when the angel of the Lord meets Gideon, he says, the Lord is with you. Amen. You mighty man of valor. You got to get that down in this, your spirit. The creator of the universe wants to partner with you to bring about salvation and deliverance from your brothers and sisters who are in the bondage of sin. The creator of the world, of amen, that thought everything that is visible, invisible, whether it be thrones, dominions, or principalities, he reigns over all of it. The creator of the world is calling you to partner with him to bring about deliverance to a people who don't know their right hand from their left. Amen. The Lord is with you, you mighty woman of valor. You mighty woman of internal strength and bravery. Amen. Look, God called Gideon something that he, amen, his actions did not show. Amen. He believed he was anything. He was hiding in the wine press. Amen. It goes on in chapter two and says he, I mean, chapter six said he was afraid. God always calls us where we're not until we believe that we are. That's how we talk to people. Quit addressing people, the body of Christ, where they are. Uh, always address them what God says about what they're going to be. And then that'll provoke them to grow into and move in what God said. God speak those things that be not as though they were. So I'm saying this to you tonight. Amen. Go in this might of yours. The Lord is with you. Amen. Surely the Lord will be with you. And you shall defeat many and nights as one man. You shall defeat. Amen. You shall bring deliverance to those that are, amen, uh, are, are addicted. You shall bring deliverance to those that are drunk. You shall bring deliverance for those that don't know God in the pardoning of their sin. You shall bring deliverance to those that are under tremendous warfare of oppression and depression Depression in the name of Jesus. Why? For one reason only, the Lord is with you. Isaiah 61 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For well, he is, amen, he's anointed me. And he goes on to tell you what he's anointed me for. Is God with you? That's it. Amen. Praise God. The deliverance from fear <clears throat> is the understanding and knowing that God, the creator of the universe, amen, the one that inhabits eternity, that, amen, does not abide in time, does not obey time. God has called you, glory to God, to bring about great deliverance, to bring about great gifting and salvation to the people. The question is simply this, amen, do you know God is with you? That's all it takes. Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Are you sure about the calling? Make your calling, make your election sure. I tell you, as amen, Caleb said to the children of Israel, when the 10 spies came back and gave a good report, amen, amen, be still. Let us go up at once for we are well able. It's time to move. Glory to God. No more, no more excuses. No more that's, amen, all that yik yak and all that stuff. Let's move. Let's move. Those that are hearing me now, those that are hearing me later on the recording, time to move. The body of Christ, the world is waiting, amen, on the manifestation of the sons and the daughters, amen, of men. The world is waiting on the sons of men, waiting on the manifestation to see the hand of God through his people in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. What he does, he does it with man and through a man to bring about deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us go up at once. It's time to move. Glory to God, you mighty woman of valor. The Lord is with you. You mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, amen. And surely you will bring about a great deliverance and praise God for the Lord will not forsake you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Go in this might of yours for you shall surely save your family. You shall surely save your church. Go in this might of yours. Go in this might of yours. Glory to God, amen, Glo go in this might of yours. Put on the whole armor of God, glory to God, and go. Praise the name, I rebuke the spirit of fear, of doubt, and unbelief, and you shall march, and God shall be glorified in the name of Jesus. My time is up, praise God, but not my spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm calling you to warfare, I'm calling you, amen, by the power of God to step up, it's time.
It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. Amen. We we spend too much time operating in observation and not revelation. We spend too much time, amen, responding to what we see and not what we've heard in the spirit. For the just shall walk by faith and not by sight. Never mind what you see. Never mind what your visual, visible, your eyes show you in the natural. Amen. What did God say to you? What word did he release? That's our word tonight. Amen. Go in this might of yours. The Lord is with you. Father, I thank you tonight for your word. I thank you for the power of your spirit and the assurance, Father, of your presence in the name of Jesus. There's nothing that we can't do. We'll overcome us. We're victory, victorious in you. We, we are led in a perpetual victory parade, going from one victory to another because of your hand and because of your might and because of your deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you and I thank you. Father, quench the spirit of fear, of rejection, of failure, of death, of acceptance from those that are under the sound of my voice. Father God, let this word have an anointing on it from this day forward. In the name of Jesus, will it never lose its anointing. And I bless you. I thank you. I magnify you. We celebrate you in, in advance as your light of your countenance has shined upon us today. In Jesus' mighty name, 